Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. This week on Arrow, we found out that the man under the hood totally doesn't matter. We got the most amazing Flash crossover and probably one of the most important flashbacks to the island all season long. Real quick though, if you're finding me for the first time, I do Arrow videos every week with bonus Q&As. Be sure to subscribe to get everything. I'm even working on a special countdown series that I'll explain in a little bit. So let's just go ahead and start with the title, The Man Under the Hood. What's that all about? That was actually the big question. When we found out someone's identity was being revealed, I had all kinds of plot theories, which Quentin went on to answer in his very eloquent speech. But let's talk about that during my top five moments. Careful for spoilers if you haven't seen the episode yet, but here we go. Number five, Quentin's Man Under the Hood speech. This is a version of the Dark Knight speech that Gordon did in that movie, which is fitting because I always kind of thought there was a strong parallel between Quentin and the Arrow in Gordon and Batman. Maybe that means that someday Quentin's going to be commissioner of Starling City. Hmm, I wonder. This was such a great way to put Laurel into this really positive mindset as to how she was going to deal with learning Oliver's secret. And I love that Quentin just flat out refused to find out. I kind of suspected from the moment Laurel found out that she was going to treat this like a good thing. At least once the shock wore off. And that epic hug that she gave Oliver is just her shedding her last moment of doubt. It was totally great. Every time on Arrow should be hug time. She's totally going to become another stealth member of Team Arrow, at least in the way Quentin is an unofficial member, you know, on the police force. And as a quick side note, I totally think we're going to see an Oliver Slade hug by the end of the season, like a big bear brother hug. They wouldn't go through the trouble of creating a Mirakuru cure if they weren't going to use it. Number four, Slade is waiting in the Arrow cave. This was another one of the best action sequences all season. That seems to be happening a lot lately. It's almost like a short film. You could just cut it out and post it as a four minute trailer. Oh wait, I kind of think they did that. Stephen Amell even did this really awesome thing where he posted a funny breakdown of the episode in this tweet. I can't wait to see him in like a comedic role someday, unless you consider Oliver to be something of a comedian. Maybe like a really serious, dark comedian. In fact, he and Felicity would make one of the greatest fandom comedic duos. I mean, she already gets most of the funny lines on the show. Number three, Slade is using Roy to create his Mirakuru army. Even though they're not a legion of soldiers, you know, if one person on Mirakuru is bad, then even a couple of them would be a nightmare. And Roy in that crazy tanning booth looking harness was straight out of a horror movie. I just love how the episode kind of jumped from noir cop drama to science fiction at Star Labs, then to horror in Slade's lab, which is really just a credit to the writing and the set design. I'm guessing that when Roy skipped town, Slade captured him. You know, he didn't turn sides. If it wasn't clear, Roy still has the Mirakuru in him. He flips out in the next episode, episode 20, so we know that he wakes up and gets off that table at some point. Just to explain the way I think the Mirakuru works a little bit, I think that the serum acts like a catalyst for your body's own natural abilities, so once you get injected, your own body just starts producing it en masse. That's why Slade was able to transfuse Roy into all those other people to make them super soldiers, and do the same thing himself with Ravager later in the episode. Number two, there is a cure for the Mirakuru. This was one of the most important island flashback scenes ever, just because it gave us the solution to the problem that has been Slade this season. We're gonna make him human again. But there's a big asterisk. Whenever Ivo explains how the cure works, he says that it cures the physiological effects in the Mirakuru, but not the psychological effects. It seems like the only reason Slade has been attacking Oliver has been because of evil Tinkerbell Shadow. So if they cure him, it sounds like it won't get her out of Slade's mind. I may have just heard it wrong, but either way, he won't be indestructible anymore, so they will be able to kill him for real. Meaning that Oliver's probably gonna have to make another choice like he did back on the island. He'll either have to kill Slade or do something else. I keep saying that Oliver's not a killer this season, at least he's trying not to be, but that doesn't mean that Sarah might not try to kill Slade for him in the same way that Oliver killed Ivo for her. And my number one moment, the amazing Flash crossover with Cisco Ramon and Caitlin Snow. So much to talk about here, so I'm just going to stick to the big stuff and we can do the rest in the comments. First off, the Star Labs facility they're working at is like the candy store for super weapons. In case you missed it, whenever they grab that gun, Caitlin says all the tech that was locked in that area belonged to Arthur Light, who was Dr. Light in the comic books, a super Looney Tunes bad guy Justice League villain. I think we can thank Jeff Johns for including that name drop. He's written comic books for a long, long time, including The Flash and Justice League, and he's actually working on The Flash TV show right now, so it totally makes sense that he would write this episode. They also did a really good job of teeing up future Flash crossovers when they talked about Felicity visiting Barry. He's being kept in Star Lab's Central City facility. The producers confirmed that he wouldn't wake up to the first episode of The Flash. And the interesting thing is, is that in this episode, Cisco and Caitlin talked about them closing down the Starlink City lab, so they're probably going to get moved to Central City, and that's how they'll run into Barry. 
But in case you didn't know, they're actually done with that first episode of The Flash. Yeah, it's totally done. They finished the pilot and Jeff Johns, Andrew Kreisberg, and Greg Berlanti tweeted this picture that they had just watched it for the first time. No word on when we're going to get to see it, the audience, but hopefully they'll air it after the Arrow finale in five weeks. That's a bit of a long shot though. But here's my one major WTF bonus moment. Slade transfuses Isabel with Mirakuru to bring her back to life as Ravager. Andrew Kreisberg actually just revealed a whole bunch of details about Isabel's character. She's basically a mashup of Isabel Rochev from the comic books and Ravager. So she basically has Isabel's backstory. You know, she was Oliver's father's lover and just wants revenge on his family. And the TV show is turning her into Ravager. The way Slade was looking at her on the table was kind of the way a father would look at a daughter. Or maybe like Frankenstein would look at his monster. Or maybe, you know, Bride of Frankenstein. So remember how I said Slade's lab looked like a horror scene? We've all seen the pictures of her as Ravager that leaked online. I actually can't put them in the video, but now we know that she'll be juiced up on Mirakuru, which is even cooler. Summer Glau is now essentially playing another Terminator, and I'm so happy. It's going to be so full of awesome, you have no idea. There's also this really cool thing they revealed about the origins of the Ravager character on the show. They were going to do it way differently before they cast Summer Glau. Originally, they wanted Katie Lotz's Sarah character to start as Ravager and then switch back to being good throughout the season. But that was until Summer Glau was cast. Because she'd worked so well as a fighter on Terminator, Sarah Connor Chronicles, and all of her other shows, they decided to give the Ravager arc to Isabel. But now it's your turn. Let me know. What was your favorite moment from the episode? Was it the Flash crossover? Was it Laurel joining the Arrow fan club? Or was it that giant Ravager teaser at the end? Overall, the episode was just a solid A across the board. I feel like I'm going to be giving straight A's to the rest of the episodes this season. The show has done such an amazing job of building momentum, which is incredible considering how awesome The Promise was earlier this year. Stephen Amell had this really nice rally cry for the next five weeks, so I'm even going to be doing a special countdown series that I'll explain in just a second. I really feel like the show's ability to jump genres, you know, horror, sci-fi, noir, cop drama, is really what's kept it fresh. It's really easy to get comfortable and then tired with the format, you know, like watching your billionth episode of Law & Order. But I'm really interested to see which genres they do in the rest of the episodes this season, and I'm really coming around on Laurel's character. I know everyone's still thinking she's going to become Black Canary in Season 3, but I still think that's too soon. I think she's just going to stay in her current role and start trying to help Team Arrow from behind her desk. You know, the same way Quentin helps them via the police force. The character that's really dangling in the wind right now is Thea. John Barrowman probably won't be back till the finale, but she's a huge part of the arc next week, so she hasn't completely skipped town. But it's really unclear as to what her role on the show is right now. So I feel like I've covered all the important stuff, but let me know what your final thoughts on the episode are. And do you think that Oliver's going to be able to cure Slade by the end of the season? So just like normal, I'm going to be posting my Q&A video tomorrow. Be sure to subscribe to get it if you're just finding me for the first time. And to explain that countdown series, each Wednesday morning, I'm just going to be posting another bonus video of Arrow just to get everyone super pumped as we get closer to the finale. So feel free to suggest topics for those videos in the comments below. In the meantime, you can click here to get that q and I'll add the annotation as soon as I post the video. And you can click here to get last week's episode. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow. High fives.